Hey everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I have another one page wonder. This one's a little bit different though. So, full disclosure, this one uses book pages or any other just kind of paper you want to use, but then one piece of eight and a half by 11 um, pattern paper, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. But let me show you what you can make. So, the pockets and the decorations on the book page or if you want to use a different digital or scrap of paper or something is the part that's the one page we're going to make seven different pieces with that one page and then like I said whatever extras and decorations you do so it's a take if you guys remember back in the day or I guess they still do them if you're a big card maker where it would be you know the one page wonder and how you chop it up to make you know six different cards or three cards out of one piece that kind of thing it's a take on that so I have made this one is um just a pocket that's decorated with these two angled um, triangles which I think is super fun and backing them on book page like this or putting them on book page then it's just ready right ready to go right into a journal or to slide into a card or something or whatever you want to use it with the book page I used was from my um which one I think it was this one my um complete book of dolls so that's the book page I used it has a really nice feel and color to it and then the orange paper that I used is from my Feeling Like Fall collection, and I used some of the little cards in there. And then I used other pieces from other fall kits that are just still cut up and on my desk and stuff. So, all right, this one I made into um, a really easy pocket, but then I decorated it. And, you know, depending on where you place the strip, you can make it look different ways. So we may do it a little different in the tutorial just so that I can show you your idea your options I love how this one turned out this one is an interesting just pass through you can see that and the way I glued the triangles um, together with this little um, fussy cut and put a ribbon on it cute right and again you could keep decorating if you wanted to this is a similar one but with a different size triangle turned a different way I just put a little tiny um, burlap or whatever that's called twine burlap ha, twine bow and a little butterfly and it passes through this way so that one is super it's really not that hard to do but for some reason my fingers are not cooperating all right and a bunch of these little cards and stuff are from the pink monarch kits harvest collection which i can link for you too if you're interested all right fun fun this is a triple stacked pocket and then this is just a large pocket. So again, it's just how we're going to chop up this piece of paper. And then this one I love. It's again the idea of um, having triangles, but they're just a little bit different shape. And, you know, really we could turn some of these into two pieces, right? You could just make one with that one and then have this piece to make in another. But I kind of like how... Um, nice and flexible all of this is and you kind of get a different look I think and again all of these can then just be placed inside your journal um, if you want to put these in your idea book go for it all right so I've covered this up to try to hold it together to show you la 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 this is what it's going to look like once you've cut it up don't get overwhelmed it's really not that hard to chop it up Okay, so I'm going to go over with you what we're doing and hopefully that's going to help. All right, so the first cut you're going to do is you're going to cut your eight and a half by 11 piece of paper in half. Okay, so cut it in half on the 11 inch side um, at five and a half inches. All right, and then you're going to end up, you know, with two halves. All right, the first half, you are going to then turn and cut it in half on that eight and a half inch side. And I'm trying to kind of keep these together to help us see what we're doing, but let's just scooch them over just a touch. All right, so you had a half a piece of paper, now you've cut it in half this way, and you are left with a quarter sheet, which is... Um, five and a half by four and a quarter inches. 
okay? And it's looking like this, it's a rectangle. You are then going to lay it on, either use your scissors and you're gonna cut from corner to corner or just lay it on your paper trimmer and cut it corner to corner, all right? And then what you wanna do, so we've just cut it and now we have two pieces, right? You're gonna turn it and kind of just hold it together and cut it co this corner to this corner. I hope that makes sense. So let's pretend this is the piece of paper, okay? That it's that piece. You've trimmed it here to here. Here, we'll just do one. You're gonna trim it from that corner to that corner, okay? And then just kind of hold it together and then either with your scissors or on your trimmer, cut it from this corner to this corner, okay? And I'm not gonna do it, but it would, it would, would it's easier to do on your trimmer. If you're a little worried, put a little piece of washi tape right on there and to hold it together, okay? And then trim it this way. All right, you will end up with these, uh-oh, where did that triangle go? Okay, with these four pieces. So these two are gonna be used on a piece of ephemera, and these two will be used, okay? Now you have this other quarter sheet. Now this is where you're going to, if you're gonna see, I there's two little pieces of waste, one um, right here and then one on the other half that I'm gonna show you. But now you have another piece that is five and a half by four and a quarter, and you're gonna cut this one um, you're going to cut it either at four inches, which leaves you a one and a half inch strip, or you can cut it at one and a half, right? All right, so now you have a piece, I hope this isn't confusing, that's four and a quarter by one and a half. So you just cut off on the um, five I don't want to misspeak, the five and a half inch side, cut off one and a half inch strip, okay? So that's gonna be a piece. Then what you have left, I've already cut mine, but is a, is a piece of paper that is um, four and a quarter by four, and you wanna make it a four inch square, all right? So you're gonna just on that four and a quarter inch side cut that quarter of inch, that was that little strip, okay? Now, for this one, you're going to do a tiny bit of measuring to get these angled pockets that look like this. So the first thing you want to do is take a ruler and mark on one of the four inch sides, mark it at one inch, put a little mark there, and then come down to this corner and mark one inch at the bottom right hand. So I've got a little mark here and here, and then you're just gonna cut diagonally, connecting those two dots. So lay it on your paper trimmer and cut from each dot, and you'll end up with two pieces like this that's gonna make a piece of ephemera. All right, now we're gonna move over to our second half of our piece of paper. And this one, cut it in half, okay? I didn't cut mine in half, and it really doesn't matter, y'all. So just cut it in half. It's much easier. And then I, I cut mine a little less than half, and it was just not smart. So just cut it in half. Do as I say, not as I do. And then there's a little strip here that's gone. Uh, with one of the pieces of paper that is five and a half by four and a quarter, cut it into on that five and a half inch side into one and three quarter inch strips. Yep, one and three quarter inches. So again, you have a quarter sheet of paper, cut it into three one and a quarter inch strips and you're just gonna have a little sliver left over and you can use that to decorate something or throw it away. And you'll have these three strips. That's gonna make that stacked pocket. And then on the other piece, you are going to cut this one. Let me just double check my notes. You're gonna cut this one um, at two and a half inches. Yep, two and a half inches. So now you're gonna have, on the five and a half inch side, now you're gonna have a piece that's 
two and a half inches by four and a quarter. And then you're gonna have a piece that is three inches by four and a quarter. And all you're gonna do on this one, the three inch one, is cut it at a diagonal. So you have two pieces, okay? We did a lot of triangles in this one. And then this piece is just gonna make that one big pocket that we have, all right? And again, how we use these and what you do with all these little strips, you know, yeah, you can be super flexible and do different things, but I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of how to take a piece of paper that you like, chop it up, and then make at least, we're going to make seven, seven pieces of ephemera. Now, my um, book page, just to keep life simple, I just cut it and I may then end up trimming these a little bit, but I'm starting off with pieces that are like a, the size of a quarter sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. So this is, um, again, five and a half by four and a quarter. And I just kind of tore a bunch of the pages of the doll book up. I did it because I was able to get four out of a page and it just made sense to start there. But we can always adjust those as we go. All right. So I'm just going to, as I pick up pieces, we're going to make them. Now see how this one, it's larger. And that's how my prototype is too. And I kind of like the look. Um, I just placed the, um, there and made a very simple pocket. All right. Let's do it a little different on, on the one we're going to make together though. Just for funsies. Right. I always have to shake it up a little bit. So if you want to make it just like this, add glue to the three sides, stick it to your paper, and you have a pocket. And then you decorate it. Let's... Um, Let's do this. Let's go ahead and then trim our paper just so you can see how it gives it a little bit different look. I am just going to tear my base paper to be closer to the size of the pocket. And again, this pocket is, uh, mine's a smidge over four and a half by two and a half. And so this piece of paper is four and three quarters by four and a quarter. All right, and we're just going to now put it on here just so you can kind of get a sense um, of how, depending on what you do with your papers, you can achieve some different looks. Um, and we can leave it nice and deep like this. You could. Here, let's do this. I'm going to fold it over. I don't know. What is that? Half an inch? Yeah, a half an inch. And... Now I have a pocket that's a little bit more shallow and I have a reinforced edge. I could tear that off and use that for something else, but we're just going to stick it down. I've got two bottles of my PVA glue going on here. I'm going to glue the flap down first. Um, I took a little bit of my glue to my workshop I did last week. So I wanted to have a couple of bottles to share in case someone wanted to use the little precision bottles. I usually try to have one with art glitter glue in it and one with my PVA line co glue, but these are both PVAs right now. <laughs> okay, I don't even know where my art glitter glue one is. It's here on my desk somewhere. All right. So again, I have been making a lot of different things with some ball themed papers. So I have a lot of just scraps and little pieces laying on my desk. Um, and I'm just using those up to decorate with. Uh, you guys can use whatever you have. If you like, like I said, if you like my feeling like fall papers, that's what these patterned ones are. Some of the polka dot ones in that kit. And then I've got some some of the little journaling cards, I think, left from that kit. It's a freebie if you haven't grabbed it. And you get a sheet of um, little cards with pumpkins and words and stuff on it. I'll make sure all that's linked in the description for you. Um, and then these fussy cuts are in the Harvest Bloom collection by Pink Monarch Prints. So... I'm just using up what's on my desk that I've already cut out and printed. Okay, now I don't know, um, you know, if I have enough cards and things to stick in, but we will, 
well, I'll, I'll put in what I have. <laughs> and if we run out, then we just run out. Or we'll switch them around just to show you how the pockets work. Okay, so again, we could add, you know, we could back that. We could add ribbons. But there's, there's our first piece. So I'm going to set these two aside. All right, another piece of book page. And... Let's, I'm, I'm going to pick this up based on my little pieces, not based on that pile. Now, these can go on your paper different ways. Let me see how I did the original. Um, and these are actually two different patterns. I don't know if you can tell that. All right, so these two triangles can be put on a piece of paper this way and you get a little bit of extra um, of the book page showing. And again, I just put a little um, a little journaling card in there. Um, if you want a different look, we can, again, shorten our paper and install them on the page like this and now it's more of a square type of card. I really like the way this looks so I'm gonna put this on the on the paper the same way. And again I like to ink. I'm using my Walnut Stain Distress Ink. My Tim Holtz. I don't even know if you guys can see that label. Given all the ink on, on the cover it's from when I have done this through the years. <laughs> um, Anyway, sorry about that, y'all. Okay. All right. And again, so fun. And I love having, I don't know if you guys do. Tell me if you do. Leave me a comment. I love having a pile of ephemera that kind of coordinates <laughs> um, for a journal. And um, being able to then just finish decorating it or tuck some things in there. You know, part of a junk journal is that you kind of, you, things don't have to match and coordinate, right? But it is fun to make some more designer junk journals, perhaps. Is that what we should call them? <laughs> All right. And again, we can decorate these pockets. I'm just throwing things all over the place. Um, with different pieces. I kind of liked having that little, little one up there. But let me pick something different since I've already done that. Um, little doodads, and maybe we'll do it this way with the butterfly this time. And let's, here, I don't know where that came from, but we'll stick that on too, because that was in a pile on my desk. So it's kind of similar, but I'm doing the opposite. I'm putting a tag in the bottom right-hand corner, or a label, I don't think that's a tag. And then in the left top corner, I'm doing just a little bit of layering with these pieces. Ta -da. Fun. I love book page projects. All right. And again, then we can just stick something um, in here because the pockets are open like that. And if you don't want to tuck it up in like I have, you know, you don't have to. Here, pull it out. You could just stick it in like this, right? And not worry about it. Up to you, 100%. And if you have something larger, that might make sense. All right, let's set those aside. Another piece of book page. And again, if you don't have book page or you don't want to use book page, use scrapbook paper, use cardstock, use other pattern paper, whatever, whatever is fun for you. Oh, okay, let's make the triple stacked pocket. This is one of my favorites. Um, and you can make this honestly any size. Just have three um, rectangles. And sometimes you'll see with stacked pockets, like in digital kits, the rectangles, like... You'd have one, one that's this size, right? Not cut apart. And then the next one would be that size. And then the next one would be this strip. And that works. Um, but you can do it with three strips of the same size. And I'm going to show you how. And it, you know, can save some of your paper. Where's my triple pocket? Just to have out what we're making. Here it is. And I left mine so that the back 
layer is the length of the pocket, okay? And then the second one goes down to the bottom as well. And then this one is more shallow because it's the, the more shallow pocket. Okay, so to achieve that, what you do is um, you want to put the top, you want to glue the top piece down first. So kind of visualize where on your paper you want it to be, the top of your pocket. Um, you know, if you want to try to make it a little bit taller, you can like that. Okay, you can bring them more together like this, but you're going to be layering them. So just kind of decide where do you want, make sure it, it works with the, the length of your strips, but where on your piece of paper do you want the top of that pocket to be? And sometimes I will just, I don't know where I put my pencil. Ugh, I'll use a pen. It's okay. Um... There's my pen. Um, you know, I'll just put like a little mark to help me remember where I want the top of that to be. Okay? So then take your first try your first rectangle. This is a rectangle, guys. I know my shapes. And you're gonna just glue the if you want it to have the full depth of the pocket, you're just gonna glue on both sides. Okay, don't glue the bottom, just both sides. And then line it up with the little mark that you made. Okay, this is exactly how I did this, but let me just say something really quick. If you want three pockets that are this depth, like you don't want things to fall all the way down in here, like let's say you have a whole bunch of little fussy cuts that you wanna stick in, you can make this stacked pocket with three shallow or two shallow and one deep pockets, okay? The way you make them all shallow is you glue all the way across the bottom as well. And then when we install the next one, you do the two sides in the bottom, two sides in the bottom, and then you have three shallow pockets, all right? Again, I wanted mine to have a nice deep pocket, another fairly deep pocket, and one shallow pocket. And that's what I'm showing you guys how to make. If I'm confusing you, I apologize. All right, pick up your next rectangle. And again, just glue on the two sides, not on the bottom of the pocket. And decide where you want to put it. I'm just kind of eyeballing where I think it's going to look good. Okay, now your last one that you're going to install, you're going to hold it by the opening and then glue on both sides and then the bottom of the pocket to close the whole thing up. Okay. Now we're going to let that dry before we start sticking things in there. Um, and then of course you can decorate this however you like. I don't usually spend a lot of time decorating these two panels. I kind of decorate down here because when you stick your lovelies inside, um, I kind of liked it the other way. When you stick your lovelies inside, this is that one says postal card. Um, you don't really see these, these parts of the pockets. Your lovely little pieces cover them up. All right, so let's real quick pick something to decorate this pocket with. I think I'm going to punch a circle. Let's punch a circle. And again, these are those Harvest Bloom papers. Aren't they pretty? Ooh, I printed it on both sides. Didn't even remember what I did. Um, let's have a circle. I'm just kind of digging through here, you guys. Ooh, we should use one of these flowers later too if we can. Um, let's see, what do I want to do? How about a cute little circle with a pumpkin on it? And then we'll pick out a label. Maybe a label like that. Okay. So many options. 
And then I think our pockets are going to be, um, I think they're gonna be dry enough that we can stick something in here. So let's see, I have one of those left. I have one of those. It would sort of start to fall in, but it's not bad. Let's see, oops, I got another one of these, good. Let's put the truck in. These have, I didn't even finish trimming this. Um, not that I can't do this off camera, but, and then of course I would ink around these and I'm sure probably add some little ribbons and stuff to them. All right, a truck. And then let's just add a flower. Oh, and how about just to kind of bring this in as well, we'll put the flower here and we'll put a little piece of that paper. Cute, right? So easy. I love it. All right, so now we've made that one. We'll set it aside. Another piece of paper. Oh, let's do some of these triangle ones. I know I said I was just gonna do what I picked up, but let's see. I love how these turned out. So, um, you've got two sets of these and one, um, one set, the triangle is shaped pretty long this way. I don't know the names of all the triangles. Do you guys? I'm sure I learned that in school one day, but all right. These are going to get installed like this. Now, they barely, with the piece of paper I have, they're barely touching in the middle, which is fine. If I cut my paper a little more narrow, we'll have a little more of an overlap. Um, it depends on, again, how you want it to look. I left it with just a small overlap here and then just put that little um, bow because I thought it was cute. Um, you want some kind of overlap or you're going to do it the way I did this one, which is I didn't have um, if y'all are going to be able to see, I didn't have much, I didn't really have, they just touched. So then I put this fussy cut. So we'll do one like that too. In fact, we'll do it with this one. All right. And then when we go to make this piece, I'll show you when they overlap. How's that? All right. So this one, all you're going to do is put glue on the sh this long edge and glue one piece to this edge of the paper. And you're gonna do the same thing with this piece, right along the long edge. All right, and now they're just barely touching. See? So, now this is where you wanna be careful, and I suggest you put like a scrap piece of paper underneath. And then let's find a fussy cut we wanna use. We'll use this one. Let me add a little ink to her. And then we are going to glue, put, put glue basically here and here. And do our best not to glue our pass-through little pocket closed. All right, so now that sweet little fussy cut is right there in the middle, holding your pass-through together. Isn't that wonderful? Now this one, I also added that um, piece of ribbon. Um, I don't know if this one needs it. I kind of liked it on the long one. We'll use some of this ribbon later. Um, I think this one looks great just the way it is. And I did notice that I did it upside down. My words are upside down and my flower orients this way. We could kind of turn it to the side. I think the flower could go this direction. I'm going to do that <laughs> just to make myself feel a little bit better. Um, and I think I have used the um, most of the journaling cards I had printed out, but I'm going to just put a piece of paper in here to remind us what we made. Goodness. It is still raining here in Virginia. I was going to film this video yesterday, and it was so dark outside. I was like, I'm going to wait. And it's still dark. It's a little bit lighter this morning, but I hope y'all can see everything all right. All right, love it, love it, love it. Okay, we'll set those aside. Now, let's do 
one when the triangles overlap. So even though this triangle is a different shape, it works the same way. And if you wanna do an overlap, you don't have to like have a big piece of paper to kind of hold it together. All right. Now, if I install it on this size paper, we're gonna have the same thing going on. But I wanna install mine like this. So I'm gonna just tear this paper and I'll tell you what size my paper ends up being. Once I tear it, <clears throat> Let's see, now I have a piece of paper that is four and a half by four and a quarter. So for this size triangle, let's see what it does. It overlaps nicely, cute. All right, so add glue again. Lay it down so you know which side of your triangle you need to glue on. And this is, this um, length of the triangle is four and a quarter inches, so that's the side you want. This side of the triangle is only three and a half, if that helps you guys. I just lay it down and make sure it looks right, because obviously, if I glued it this way, that wouldn't look right. Follow, follow, I hope. Okay, all right. And then for this one, now again, it's open, right? But they overlap, decide which side you want to overlap. And then just put a little bit of glue right there at that point. Again, best practice would be to slide a piece of paper under there in case your glue oozes um, and you don't accidentally close up your pass-through. All right, let's put a piece of a bow with this instead of the twine. If I can find the end of the ribbon. You guys are probably seeing it perfectly. All right, now this is... Um, some seam binding ribbon that I've just dyed using um, some ink pads that I have. You just wet the seam binding and then add the color and either let it air dry or you can use like a hair dryer or a heat gun. I love this ribbon. I love how crinkly it is. It makes me happy. You can make it in all different colors. Um, we're thinking about doing a workshop at Heartfulness Studios where um, we do like maybe three mini, mini techniques or three techniques. Um, so like we could um, dye ribbon, we could, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of mini techniques, right? <laughs> But anyway, three projects or three small projects that we could do in a couple of hours just to... Um, isn't that pretty? I mean, I don't think it needs anything else. You certainly could um, decorate these pockets, but I'm going to leave it. I just think it looks super fabulous. And then we have a little card that can go in there. And again, these can glue down on a journal page. You can leave it open, have another tuck spot, all kinds of things. All right. Um. Anyway, so I'm thinking about doing a workshop like that. Um. And really, it was like how to sew on paper, um, how to dye ribbon, how to do a certain type of stitch for a journal binding or a tab binding or something like that. Just kind of some different techniques. Um, tell me if you guys, if that was available in your area or if you live locally, if that's something you'd be interested in, um, that type of workshop. I'm also going to try to do like I did last time with my zine workshop. Once the workshop's over, then have a quick video showing you what we did at the workshop because I think that was kind of fun too. All right, we've got two left. We're Now again, you could turn some of these into more than one piece, but all right, this one, sort of like the other shaped triangles, you can make a decision on how you want to install them. Um, I, you know, I kind of like having the paper the same height as my triangles. So I'm gonna trim this paper off once I kind of figure out which way I wanna do it. Um, if I turn them this way, we have less of a gap. If I turn them this way, we have a much larger gap, which I like. Um, and again, we could do them separately and have extra pieces. Do one here and then do a second one. I'm going to install mine this way. So we're gonna trim, 
let's see, we're going to trim about a quarter of an inch off. I'll, again, I'll give you the measurement here in a second. I'm just using my paper to help me line up where I want to tear it. So I'm working with a piece of paper that is four inches by five and a quarter. That's what this piece of paper is. And I think I told you I cut these to um, five and a half by four and a quarter. Obviously, I did not do them all the same size, but it's just to get you started, right? Like I wasn't trying to say they all needed to be the exact same size. I just think it's fun when you're crafting and you have that one piece of paper you cut up and then you're ready to go. You've got your papers. Now I'm going to leave this part of the triangle um, open. I'm only going to add glue to these two sides. It just gives me a little more flexibility in what I put in the pocket um, by leaving the top of the flap open. I'm going to do the same thing down here. So we're going to add glue to these two sides. Now if you want to close that up, go ahead. It will still work. You may just have to be a little more careful with how you tuck things in. All right, we're gonna let that dry while I decorate it. Oh, here's some more fussy cuts. Look, it's mostly flowers. I think I used a lot of the um, like pumpkins and things. I'm gonna turn it this way. That's like a cornucopia. Is that how you say that, cornucopia? All right, so here's where I'm going to give you all my spiel. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so, so you'll know when I have released new content. <clears throat> also, leave me a comment. Give the video a thumbs up. It's super quick and easy for you to do that thumbs up, and it really helps my channel. So thank you, thank you. And thank you guys for the people that consistently say hello and give me feedback or ask a question. Y'all are so appreciated. Thanks for the comments. It's so fun to hear from you, um, and it also helps YouTube say, oh, people like what she's doing, and um, they may show my videos to more people, which is always, in my opinion, a great thing. All right, that's the end of my spiel. Okay, I'm going to add this one here. And, you know, if you want to mass make these and just kind of assemble them, and then decorate them when you're putting them in your journal. That's always a great option too. So here's some more of the journal cards that were, um, there were several of these that I had that um, you can decorate however you want or you can back the ones with the words. Um, this fussy cut is not cut out yet, but I think it would be super cute. So I'm gonna do not a careful fussy cut, but a quick one just so y'all don't have to sit here and watch my scissors. And you know, I have a Cricut and I use it sometimes for my fussy cutting, but you have to take the time, you know, to upload it into design space and all of that. But I really do like to cut paper. <laughs> so I don't know, some of the time I use it and a lot of the time I don't because I don't mind a quick fussy cut. So cute. And then let's add a strip here. So see how you can very quickly, even with just a piece of paper that you cut to whatever size or like the tags in this kit, you can all of a sudden have something that looks super fab. All right, I'm going to glue this down. We have one more to go. One more. Um, I just wanted something cute to stick in here. All right, there we go. All right, so this is what I was showing you. See how easy it is to slide something in if you leave the top open? Um, again, up to you. And then you can kind of see those pumpkins peeking through. All right, now this is the, the easiest, but also probably, you know, just like any of these pieces of paper, you can use this anyway. All I did with my prototype is I glued it down and I just brought it up a little because I thought it would be fun um, and made a little pocket and left the book page long. Um, 
we can, we can do that. We can bring it to the bottom. We can put it on a smaller piece of paper and give it a completely different look. Let's turn, I don't necessarily want her like that. Let's turn our paper this way, tear it off, and we'll just make a completely different sized one. So the square of paper we're working with now is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. That's fun. All right. Um, and this is just that one and a half inch strip of paper that we had. So it's one and a half by four and a quarter. Look at that. Now, again, super easy and basic. You could bring it up, do whatever. I'm going to just do the simplest of pockets. And we're going to, depending on how you decorate it, it makes it look wonderful and very in a very quick short period of time we end up with a um, pile of ephemera uh, that you can use in your journals bam find your words find your words all right here we go I am hoping to plan a trip here soon to go see my daughter in New York. I miss her. Um, and I was thinking if I plan it, I don't know, in October, so in, within the next month or so, we could even start, you know, doing some holiday shopping. She's only going to be able to be home for like a day or two, which is going to be really hard for me. I think she's going to come in for Christmas, like on Christmas Eve, and then be here through the, the couple of days in the weekend. So it'll be a nice visit. But she's the one that's always, every year, helped me prepare for the holidays, and we bake. And, of course, her birthday is um, early January. And so we usually see each other or spend some time close to New Year's um, together. So there's just all kinds of things that are going to be different this year. Look, here's a pumpkin. Um, so I'm kind of trying to prepare mentally and think of some new things maybe we can do uh, since I know this year is going to be quite different. Um, quite different as the mom of a college graduate who has moved to the big city. <laughs> and of course I have my other, my other kiddos who I love, love, love. Um, but it's a little different. It's a little different. And, and I don't mean that as, you know, in, in, in any, in any bad way. I'm so excited that my son will be here through the whole season this year. It's been many years because he's the one that's lived away. And I missed him desperately when it was him. And then my three bonus kids. Yay, my bonus kids. Um, they have embraced a lot of our traditions and, of course, are here and celebrate with us. We always do a big family um, decorate Christmas cookies afternoon on a Saturday or a Sunday leading up to the holidays. So we, we have lots of things that we do. It's just I know I'm going to miss my Sarah this year. Oh, and I was leaving that there because I thought that polka dot would be a cute little card to put in. All right. So from one piece of eight and a half paper here, I'll put the ones we made together out. And I'll hold the ones I did as the prototype. Um, if I don't get confused, right? Um, there we go. From one piece of paper... Hmm, that'll be upside down. Okay, that's what it was. We have made some really wonderful pieces of ephemera. So like I said, this one is a little bit, um, it's one piece of decorative paper, but certainly um, you have to have other, other pieces to put it on. So I hope that wasn't misleading. All right, if you guys like it, don't forget, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Have a great day until next time because we are going to have fun again soon. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye.